MR is very sophisticated, but it's very confusing also. Most people don't understand all the terminology. There are Tesla numbers that people hear about. They hear that their favorite athlete was injured, but they won't know the extent of the injury till he has an MR scan. I wonder if we can explain some of that a little bit better. There are many different yeah. types of MRIs. There are different Tesla, which is field strength of MRI. Three Tesla is the highest that's clinically being used now. Very common is 1.5 Tesla, which is half as strong. And there are still a lot of MRI units that are one-fifth as strong, or 0.6 Tesla. So Tesla means the field strength of the MRI. The higher the number, for example, three Tesla, means it's a more powerful magnet. That means it can scan faster, and the pictures will be much clearer. They're higher resolution pictures. Speed isn't the whole thing with the high field strength with the three Tesla, but it's part of it, correct? Absolutely. I was very fortunate to start MR imaging in the early days. Mm -hmm. um, and we really worked at developing some of the new technology, some of the coils. And I was at the forefront when we were imaging various joints. And it would take up to 45 minutes, an hour to image a shoulder. And the images were just not as good. They were blurry and the patients get tired and move. And we were having like uh, weather charts. It was really very difficult and gradually now we are able to image a shoulder, one of the most difficult joints in the body to image, in basically 15 to 20 minutes. Have magnificent sharp images of all the tendons of rotator cuff and of the glenoid labrum, which is basically a very, very difficult diagnosis to make without adding contrast material into the joint. We can see that now with uh, three Tesla images. MR is so sensitive to the soft tissues that you're seeing diseases that we couldn't actually see before. Absolutely, we couldn't see with x-ray and we couldn't see with CAT scan. We started seeing uh, fractures of the femoral neck that were so frequently missed in the emergency rooms, particularly of the elderly patients, or fractures of the pelvic bones that we couldn't pick up until weeks later when there was some healing, or the fractures of the femoral neck that would become displaced. These were all very exciting when we started diagnosing them with MRI. Um, so there's a lot of talk, uh, which is a very confusing topic, when we talk about the field strength or the Tesla strength of a magnet. Uh, you'll hear 3T, 1.5T, 1T, 1.2T. Um, I think the best analogy is, is, is to compare it to um, something I think most people understand is the, uh, the resolution or the megapixels of a camera. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can think of years ago when we first started to take pictures with our phones, uh, they were one, two megapixels, and we could make pictures, and we were excited, and they looked good. Uh, and today, on uh, so the, our more sophisticated phones, uh, the, the uh, phones have actually replaced cameras because the pictures are such a high resolution. The megapixel is, you know, in that 8, 10, 12, 16 range, and the pictures are beautiful. Um, the analogy I'll try to explain to some people sometimes is in the past, uh, we could take a picture of a flower, and we could see it was a flower, we could see it had five petals, we could see the color of the flower pink, and um, it was exciting. Um, today, we can, with the newer cameras or the newer phones, we can take that same picture of the flower and obviously see there's five petals and that it's pink. Uh, but the nice thing today is, and if we compare this to MRI, if we look at that same flower, we can actually see the small little dew drop on it. And I think that's the ability we have with some of the MRI cameras today is that the, mm -hmm. the radiologists now have that ability to see another level deeper and look for things that in the past just they weren't visible. So you would have that pain in your knee that you knew was a pain in your knee and the radiologist would say, I don't see anything causing the pain in your knee because we were using the old phone. Right. Today using, using the new phone, 
I think we have a much better chance of telling you why that pain is in your knee. Mm -hmm. Is there, does a patient have to know what coil they're coming in for, or, or do they just want to make sure that they're in an up-to-date or state-of-the-art mm -hmm. environment? Um, I think from a patient's point of view, probably the simplest place to start would be to ask a very simple question. How old is the equipment? Uh, I think it's fair to assume the newer the equipment, uh, the more sophisticated it's going to be. Um, I think from a patient's point of view, I think a couple of simple questions to ask. Um, one of the things we always fight against in MRI is claustrophobia. Even people that aren't severely claustrophobic have some anxiety of going in a closed environment. Um, so one of the things I would ask is how big of an opening does the machine have? Uh, and the magnets uh, today, as compared to the older systems, aren't as deep. And that is what gives the uh, appearance of when you go in to have the exam done, the shorter the magnet, the less claustrophobic it feels. Right. So I think that's a very basic question that you can ask.